Well, hello again, and welcome to my uh, tutorial on how to use Photoshop to rotoscope and convert a 2D photo to a stereo 3D photo. Well, we want to first start out by grabbing your photo and loading it into the program. Click on your Layers tab. And now click down on here to create a new layer. Very important before you start messing with this photo, you create another layer. Okay, now you want to depict which object is closest to the screen. Well, it seems like this character right here is closest. Just barely, but yes, he is closest. And if you do want to do a full conversion on this, you'd want to do each individual object that is closest to the screen to the farthest away from the screen. Now in order to do that, you had to take like this arm right here and paint it white. And now because the body of this character is behind the arm, it gets painted a slightly darker color than the arm is. This leg right here could be painted the same color as this, but this leg is farther back, so it needs to be painted slightly darker than the both of these two. The head would be probably the same. The hat would probably be just a tad closer than these, but ever so slightly farther away than the arm. Yeah, it gets complicated, but that's what needs to be done in order to properly convert this to add depth to the picture. So now we're going to go ahead and start off by rotoscoping the character. I'm going to do this uh, as quickly as possible just for demo purposes. Take your selection tool and go over it like so. Not looking to be too neat. If you're having trouble viewing this in the program, you can zoom in. I didn't zoom in because I'm kind of used to this. And get a little closer to the object before you start tracing around this. Oops, Made a little bit neater than that. Come down to the hand. I'm going to come all the way over and now you see how it has a little circle on the right hand side of that. That means that uh, you can connect the selection right then and there. If you're in a position to where you really can't see that, anywhere that you put this thing, as long as you hit the control button, that little dot will come up. Well, not dot, but circle, and you left click. Actually, you know what? Okay, that needs to be... Well, actually, because it's down below, it's not going to matter. Now, in a, a other spot, like, say, if you put it right here, if you put it way out to here, it's going to link it right to here, and as you can see, there's no way to adjust that. Now, what you want to do is come over to here to your color picker. You can either drag this up, or you can change the color right here. Okay, go over to your paint bucket and paint that. Okay, now you want to start a new layer. You can also name these layers if you want by double clicking on the name and changing the uh, name to make sure that uh, you know what character needs to be in what position in the layer order because your layer order is extremely important. Let's just do man one. 
Okay. On the layer order, anything that's on top of the layer tree is closest to the camera, and anything on the bottom is farthest away. So since we created a new layer, we want to drag this below that character. I want to grab your selection tool again and create a spline around this character. Okay, now that we got that done, you want to click on the color picker again. Not really. Well, yeah, it is a color picker. I didn't think it was called that. You can either drag it down just a hair, but to be a little bit more precise, say you want to drop it down to, I don't know, about, uh, say, 90. Click OK. Click on the paint. And paint it. As you notice, it's slightly darker than that one. This will tell the program that's the position it needs to be in when you go to displace. Name it again. Oh, I named it wrong. Change that to a three. Hey, you're gonna make mistakes with this. This is very complicated work. Go ahead and drag that below that. Okay, to zoom in, you wanna hit your Z, Z key, and you can go uh, with the, uh, whoops, the left click of the mouse can scroll, or not scroll, but drag the mouse to the left, and it'll zoom out. Drag the mouse to the right, and it zooms in. Okay, now that we're on our third character, you want to take a look at this now. This little character right here is on top of this object right here, even though this is slightly ahead of him in the camera angle. Because he's on top, you must paint him next. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in. Press the space bar to adjust the position. And begin to draw an outline. And it doesn't matter if you draw uh, over this character or not, because it won't make any difference. After I draw this and paint it, I'm going to show you why your layer order is important. Hey, you see right here, it's very difficult to figure out where that character is or not. It looks like it's a little off. Whenever rotoscoping anything, it's always best to work with uh, raw, uncompressed data, or even raw, unfiltered data for that matter, especially in video. Anything that is finished is a royal pain to work with. And the reason for it is because if it's too heavily compressed, you can't see it. Or if it's... Uh, got the uh, video filters on it as finished video usually does. You can't depict what is going on in the scene as easily as you could with raw data. The reason why filmmakers always go with the raw before they finish everything up when they do the rotoscoping jobs. It just makes it a lot easier to see what you're doing. Plus 
Plus they also do object removes. Like for example, this would be in front of this object, so technically speaking, you would want to remove it to do a correct roto job on this, especially if this character never moves from its position in front of another character. I'm going to choose 80. Okay, this is why you keep your layer order important. Uh, your layer order. This right here, it's on top of this character that I just painted. If you don't keep your layer order, let me drag this back up, it covers over the front object and will mess up the displacement with the death map. And now that we're done with that, create another one. Go ahead and drop it down. And now you want to figure out what object to do next. And chances are you're going to want to do this object because he's on top of that. Not too worried about being neat. Just demo. Yeah, see how I messed all that up? Uh, hit Control Z if you make a mistake. Since he's not quite that far away from that object, I'm only going to do a, let's see here, a 75. It'll make him blend in a little bit better. Gotta name that ramp. Create another layer. Drop that down. Zoom out a little, whoops, zoom out a little bit. Okay, let's see, I would say these engines right here would be the next. Go ahead and zoom back in. Okay, those wheels are not part of it, so gotta go past them. Yep, that's with it. This is the reason why you don't want to really work with uh, compressed, finished data because it is incredibly difficult to see what you're doing. Because I can even tell now that this thing passes underneath the wing. go ahead and do a 60. Well, actually, no, a 65 would work better. Uh, this is just for demonstration purposes. You always have to play with this stuff in order to get it right. Okay, one thing that I ought to point out is that if you uh, 
while you're adjusting this thing, if you make a mistake and you want to go back to say the start, you can select this and you drag the uh, pan a little bit over and drag it back, pinch. Well, that didn't work either. Hit Control A. See how the cut comes up on the bottom of the mouse? You can drag this thing a little bit. I think that's the way I always should have done it in the first place. Ah, there we go. Yeah, and the marching ants come back around. That means that you can repaint this object. Yeah, the wing was definitely on top of that. Let's see here. Well, I guess to make this a little bit simpler on everybody, including me for this demonstration, I will just go ahead and uh, I'll do a, a quick roto around this whole piece and do the floor in the background. You can't really see a whole lot and I don't have exactly a lot of space for these videos. So this isn't going to be perfect. I really can't even tell if that's part of the ship or not. It's all blended in too well. well let's just go ahead and do this, see what happens. I'm assuming that that's part of the ship. Can't really tell. Very difficult to see all this. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that he's inside, so that's glass. And this gear is a part of it as well. I don't really recommend using this program for this because this is this speci this is specifically why this little selection tool is not the greatest. Uh, even though this is CS5, I don't even know if they have improved this in uh, the pr in the new version of this CS6. But this is absolutely terrible. See, I don't even know what that is. I uh, can't tell if that's the background or not. If it is, well, then we made a mistake. wasn't exactly worried about it but that's what you gotta keep an eye out for let's go ahead and put this at 60 hey you notice how I forgot to drop it wait a minute here hmm well this is odd it's never done this before Oh, that's what happened. The man was still select. Well, that's kind of weird because it's not even supposed to do that. Well, if you make a mistake like that, just hit Control Z once, twice, three times, and it just keeps on doing this. Yeah, that's the thing I don't like about this program. In order to be able to fix a mistake like this, you pretty much have to start all over. This would have to be uh, done 
Yeah, that's what happened. This program's got a lot of glitches in it. That's the reason why I do not recommend using it. I delete that layer. Uh, I'm wondering if I can uh, do that now. Yeah, that worked. Okay, what ha Okay, now I know exactly what happened. I had that. Uh, the other one still highlighted. Oops, my mistake. That's what happened. Okay, now in order to fix this, I gotta turn all this junk off and create a new layer. And now this one goes on the top because this is going to be the first man. Got to redo him. Okay, now that I got that fixed, turn these back on, create a new layer, put that below that, and now I'm going to go ahead and from right at this point I'm going to go ahead and do the floor. I'm going to show you a little something here. Yeah, when you go to do the floors, this would be back farther than these objects. So, if you paint the back of this the same color as this, then it's going to look off. And if you do it the opposite, painting uh, the, the front of this the same color as the back, it's going to make these objects look like they're kind of uh, floating on the floor. So, in order to fix this, going to need to depict where the color needs to be. Share 100% on that. So if I put it at a 95, actually not a 95, a 90, because he was 95. Or was he 90? No, he was 90. Let me go ahead and put this at a Mm, an 85. Okay, this is already at a 75. So you want to put this differently. And the best way to do that is to go ahead and use your color picker to change. Whoops. See, that's one of the glitches that I hate in this thing. Okay, the color picker put that to 60, so here so you're going to want to have that a little bit darker so this you would want to change to a 55 and this come on you want to change it share so that one guy was a 90 so you want to do this at 85 and then you want to select on this you want to right click on it and select gradient tool now whenever you do this left click on it and drag it to a certain point and let's put it to about maybe right here and you notice how it changes the the shade from up in the closest it's not as dark in the back it's really dark well, this will improve on the floor depth map it will look more realistic and it's just a smidge darker underneath here. Hmm, that even got messed up. Oh, that's right. Wait a minute. Okay, whatever. Hmm, hmm, hmm. 
Okay. Okay, not sure exactly how that happened. <clears throat> but anyways, that's how you uh, do the gradient on that. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and do... Uh, let's name this uh, floor. I'm going to go ahead and do a background layer. Yeah. And very simply just go around. You can go around the whole thing if you want, but it's not necessary. Put the background like so. And let's see here, 55 to say so go ahead and do a um, 30. Make it look like it's kind of far away. Right click on the gradient tool and switch it back to the bucket tool and paint. Okay, now let me take a look at this and see what happened. And for some reason it didn't uh, paint it correctly. Go ahead and hit Control A on that. And go up to that tool. Huh. Okay. To fix this, use the color picker. Do that. Switch it over because for some reason the bug puts it in the background instead of on the top like it's supposed to. And you go to your paint bucket and paint that. Well, it's supposed to work. Yep, apparently it isn't going to work. Oh well. And mistakes happen. Okay, let's uh, keep going with this. What I'm going to do now is just go ahead and hit Control A to make sure the entire thing is selected. I'm going to turn off the original photo and here's why. When you go to right click on that, you merge visible because those layers have to be compressed into one file in order to save them. Now you want to hit Control Shift S and you want to save this to a Photoshop PSD file. Save. Click OK. Now hit Control Alt Z. That will undo all those changes in case you need to go back and make any color adjustments to the picture. Now what you want to do is click on File, New. OK. Now you want to take your new, your original photo, pull it in. In order to get rid of these cross, you need to double click on it. It creates a little icon right in here. Double click on this, click OK. Go ahead and close that. Click No. Now you want to right click on this and say Duplicate Layers. Name this right. Double click on background and name this left. Okay, now you want to go up to the filter. Click on it. Go down to distort, displace. Change this vertical scale to a 10 and change the horizontal scale to a negative 5. The left eye is always negative. Click OK. Now it's asking you where that PSD file is located. Click on that, open it, give it a little bit of time. Could take a while, some machines are slower than others. It's got a bug in it, it usually does that to me, sometimes it doesn't. Click on the right one, make sure it's highlighted. Do the exact same thing. Filter, distort, displace, and this time you want to just type in five for positive values. Right has requires positive values to displace. And click on the same thing, the PSD file. Okay, you notice how it shifted? That means you did something right. Okay, now 
In order to be able to copy this, you need to hit Control A and the marching ants appear around your picture. Now you want to hit Control Copy, go over to File, New, OK that, click on Paste, or Control Paste rather, sorry. Okay, now you want to go back over here and click on the left, make sure it's highlighted, the marching ants are already around it, click Copy, come back over, and this time go into the Channels option, click on Red, click Control P for Paste, now you want to turn on the RGB layer for all the layers, and now you have a genuine 3D image. If you have a pair of analog glasses, you can view this. Okay, now I do not know how to create a side-by-side -side view in Photoshop, but since your 3D image is already ready, all you have to do is come back over here if you are done completely adjusting everything, and you can save these out as left and right just by hitting Control shift s and you can save them at any type of file you want uh, bitmap, uh, jpeg, it doesn't really matter whichever you need to use for the next program to combine them generally jpegs are used well this concludes my how to rotoscope com and convert to uh, convert a 2D picture to a stereo picture. Uh, I, hope so, I hope this helps some folks out there to alleviate the confusion and to inform you that this is the appropriate way to convert uh, 2D to 3D. On the fly, 2D to 3D is not sophisticated enough to create correct depth. Well, anyways, thanks for watching.